Hello, hi, video auditor. Welcome back. Don't you just love it when you do a ton of research before buying a new lens? You look at endless comparisons, infinite reviews, and consider every brand under the sun. And when you finally get round to buying it and you get it in your greasy mitts, after all that, you find out it's good. I'm only messing, but I'm hoping for videographers like us, this video will be the only one you'll need to watch before considering buying one of these bad boys. You can expect my usual proudly informal style and I'll be covering all of the features that are most important to me as a videographer. But firstly, what is it? Pfft. Like you don't already know, it's a 50mm prime lens with a huge maximum aperture of f1.4. Of course, it's from Sigma's coveted art range, and correct me if I'm wrong, but so far, every lens in that series has been somewhere in the range of very good to exceptional. Seriously, no duds. Price-wise, I actually think the Sigma 50mm art is actually decent value for money. There is no point me quoting you prices because they fluctuate so frequently. So I'll just say that in dollars, pounds, euros, you'll be looking at somewhere in the region of 500 to 1000 of aforementioned currencies, which for the features and quality you get is pretty astounding. And this lens has been out for a little while now, so what I would do is have a look on the used market, and that's exactly what I did. I managed to find a near-perfect copy on Amazon Marketplace, which is just an amazing place to buy, because the sellers pretty much have to adopt the 30-day no-quibble return policy. And that means you can buy with complete confidence, plus the prices are generally amazing. Uh, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll pop a kit.com link with this product and all others mentioned in this video. Uh, and you can browse there and get the best prices on Amazon Marketplace. Do it. But what features does it have? Well, it has a 50mm focal length. What? Yeah, I know you already know that. I was just getting it out of the way. Shit. But the first focal length I ever got was Canon's little nifty 50 plastic fantastic. And it's been one of my favourite focal lengths ever since. So yeah, everyone, everyone needs a 50mm prime. Everyone. It has a really large maximum aperture of f1.4, which means it's going to be great in low light, and you'll be able to get that beautiful, melty, out-of-focus area. And actually, one of the things that people say about this lens is that it's not a lens that needs stopping down to be sharp. I'm looking at you, Canon 50mm f1.2. That lens badly needs an update. It's an autofocus lens, so it'll work great with Canon's dual pixel autofocus. And when I tested it for stills, it was quiet and quick-ish. Not that I really care about autofocus speed, because most of what I do is manual focus for video, but I'm happy to say that it does have a very large manual focus friendly focus ring. You don't get image stabilization with this lens, and that's kind of understandable for Sigma because they seem to save that for their zoom lenses. Um, plus, I'm going to be using this mainly with the Sony Alpha bodies, which have stabilized sensors, so not too bothered about that, to be honest. It has a filter thread of 77mm, which pleases me because so many of my other lenses are 77 and that means that I can use my filters without using step up or step down rings. So, Sigma, well done, you did it. Sigma's art line has a reputation for being optically excellent, and as I'm an expert in optical design, I can tell you that this lens has many elements in a number of groups, and that's good because of the reason. But three of those elements are special low dispersion glass, and there are plenty of multi-layer coatings, and oh my god, talking about optical design is boring. Moving on. But is it well built? Well, it feels solid and actually surprisingly quite a lot smaller than I thought it would be for an f1.4 lens. It's made of uh, nice plastics and some metal, so yeah, pretty fantastic overall. So I'm going to nickname this lens the Plastic Fantastic. Wait, the lens hood is great. It's nice and big and snaps really firmly into place and it's not going anywhere once it's on. It's just good. The mount is made of metal as it should be, but Sigma, no weather sealing rubber gasket. Are you f***ing serious? What would that have cost you? I want to send you to bed with no dinner. I do, however, want to commend Sigma for their beautiful focus ring. It's smooth and quiet and damn near perfect for manual focus and video. Well done, Sigma. Let's really quickly run through my likes and dislikes, starting with my likes, and the main reason why I bought this lens is for the quite cinematic look you can get from this lens with very minimal effort. And that's just down to a very large maximum aperture and just supreme optical quality that Sigma were able to achieve with this lens. The results really just speak for themselves. It's just one of those lenses that you take out and shoot with 
and I, I just have such a high success rate with the shots with this lens. Um, so overall I'd say no matter what I whinge about in the dislikes, the image quality from this lens trumps everything else. Amazingly, this lens doesn't need stopping down to be sharp. I would say that it's 95% as sharp at f1.4 as it is at f4, and possibly even more impressive is how sharp it stays when you stop it all the way down to f16. And because this is such a sharp lens, if you're normally in the habit of adding just a touch of sharpening to your footage in editing, I, I th honestly think with this lens you wouldn't want to, it would possibly even look over sharp. I do love the build quality, it's chunky but quite compact for what it is. I definitely think with the materials used it's on par with Canon L lenses and the Nikon Nikkor, the higher end lenses. The focus ring is great, it's so easy to manually focus with this lens, as I mentioned before. It's quiet and it's nice and wide and buttery smooth in operation. In fact, I have it on good authority that Sigma actually use real butter to lubricate the lens, so that explains it, don't you think? And then my dislikes, and there aren't many of them. Firstly, no weather sealing gasket. My only build quality concern is that the plastic that covers the majority of the lens has a matte finish that I suspect will scratch really easily. And whilst it's, I'm not too worried at the moment because I, honestly I don't intend selling this lens anytime soon. I know for some of you guys that might be a concern. This lens does breathe a fair bit, but then it should do because it's not a cinema lens. But I wonder if Sigma have addressed this on the Cine version of this lens. It's only a little annoying, and to be honest, if you buy this lens, I challenge you not to shoot this pretty wide open most of the time. And when you do that, no one is going to notice breathing, because you've got so much blurred area, you know, you've got so, so little depth of field you're never going to notice it. At 815 grams, it is reasonably heavy, but then it should be because of what it is, uh, so I was kind of expecting that and I'm kind of over it. And finally, my opinion, and well, it's it's a masterpiece. That's all I can say. I'd say if you're in the market for a 50mm lens, this is probably it's amongst the very best options out there. Even when Canon get their fingers out and replace their iconic f1.2 50mm, even then, and even if it's as sharp, because I can't see it being sharper than the Sigma, I think Sigma's art will still be the more compelling choice. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure Canon's new 50mm L lens will be exceptional. It kind of can't afford not to be, but bear in mind that when it comes out, it's going to be at least 50% more price-wise, so, you know? If you're wondering what alternatives there are, well, there's, there's Canon's 1.4 cheapy non-L version, which is cheap, light, and not bad, but it does need stopping down a little bit to be properly sharp, which kind of makes the f1.4 aperture a bit pointless and redundant. Of course, there's the aforementioned Canon f1.2 L lens, which I don't deny is a legendary lens, but it's quite soft, wide open, and is badly in need of an update. If Canon have got their heads screwed on, the next version will have vastly improved optics and focusing. For the budget conscious, I would recommend looking into the Samyang line, which they tend to be outstanding value for money and pretty sharp. Samyang make a few flavours of 50, a manual focus, an autofocus, a cine, and then a version from their premium cine zine range. All of them are good value and are worth looking into. If you're into native Sony glass, there's the Zeiss Planar, Planar? T 50mm f1.4, which is highly regarded, highly expensive, and really high performing. Don't get me wrong, it's great, but at almost double the price of the Sigma, I can't in good conscience recommend it. If you're in the Nikon world, then of course you've got their Nikkor f1.4G, which is outstanding value for money and really quite good and just uh, just a no-brainer if you're in the Nikon world. Of course, the market is flooded with 50mm primes, 
Uh, so there are lots more to consider and I'll just bundle them all together and they'll be linked below. So just check there, you can have a browse and yeah, definitely check the Amazon Marketplace because that is the place to get the best deals on used gear. And that's it for now. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I loved filming it for you guys. If you're still in the mood for more dope camera videos, I'll pop a few interesting ones on this side for you. And if you're not subscribed, hit this blob right now. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.